everybody who put their heart and their soul into building this important fight back to stop the privatization of our health care. We're going to hear from a number of people over the next little while, and I want to first introduce... By the way, I'm Michelle, I'm with the Greater Toronto Health Coalition, one of the local coalitions that helped build today. Um, our first speaker needs no introduction, but I will introduce her. Natalie Mara is the Executive Director of the Ontario Health Coalition, and if you had to put a face to the heart and the brains behind this movement, it is Natalie. Welcome. interpretation can you just move them over sorry guys sorry thank you very very much welcome oh my goodness people are still filing in from the back I wish you could see this view wow this is a massive massive crowd and I'm just gonna take a minute while people are moving their way up into the park here because there are heroes across this province. You know, we give a lot of air time to Doug Ford, who says he's not privatizing healthcare. Well, he absolutely is privatizing healthcare. But what matters right now, what matters right now is that we build the biggest movement our province has ever seen. That we raise our voices in no uncertain terms, as Tommy Douglas said. That we rouse our friends and neighbors and co-workers and community members, our families, and we, we tell them that we stand up for our public health care now or we're going to lose it. emergency departments closing. We have never heard of so many vital services shutting down, ICUs working with half the staff they need for the patients. Emergency departments working with a third of the staff they need for the patients. At the same time, community health centers that literally have spent the best part of our health system, the most community run, the most focused on equity, the most preventative, the most team-based care that we have in our province, have spent the vast majority of the last 30 years with their budgets frozen, even as they have wait lists, even as we have millions of people who can't access a family doctor. The solutions are here in front of us. They are not innovative. They are not new. It's just that the government has to be competent. They have to care. They have to actually want to run the public health system. And they have to not be focused wholesale on handing over health care piece by piece by piece to for-profit interests that are in it just to take as much money as they can out of our health care services. Did anybody vote to privatize health care? No. Did anybody vote to privatize health care? No. They're sitting there in the legislature. Let's shake that floor. Did anybody in Ontario ever vote and give them a mandate no. to break up, dismantle, shut down, underfund, and privatize? our public health care. No! 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 This is what, this is what 10,000 people telling Doug Ford to stop privatization sounds like. And the next time our promise is it will be 20,000 and then it's going to be 60,000 and then it's going to be 100,000 then it's going to be a million because if he thinks that we're going to give up public health care for all, that we're going to leave the elderly paying, as we're hearing, $3,000 for their eye surgery, $7,000 going into debt at 80 years old to pay for knee 
education and health care, then Doug Ford has another thing coming. The fight! The fight! The fight is on! And thank you so much for being here. There are heroes in our midst. I want to recognize them. There is uh, Patrick Hannon and Tracy Ramsey and the Windsor Health Coalition. There is Brenda Scott and Nora Beatty and the Great Bruce Health Coalition and the Chisley Group to save their hospital. There is Shulan Qian and the Chinese Community Health Coalition. There is Ken Parks and Lance Livingstone and the Durham Regional Health Coalition. There is Tony Vanderstelt and the Safe, the Bracebridge Hospital Group who are here. There is Jim Stewart and the Waterloo Health Coalition. Rajendra Sukhanen, Janine Herman and McLeod and the Brampton Caledon Health Coalition. Ken Cole, I saw you somewhere, and the Mississauga Health Coalition. And the Toronto York Region Labour Council. Sandra Hashcroft, our nurse on our board and a representative from USCW. Dr. Dick Zellman down here, our board member. Dr. Ragu Venugopal. Dr. Nancy Olivieri. All the hundreds of doctors in the Health Coalition and with them the Canadian Doctors for Medicare. Erin Harris and the Ontario Nurses Association. J.P. Hornick and Opsu Sappo, Tyler Downey and Shailene Stewart and SEIO Healthcare, Sue Hutt and the Niagara Health Coalition, Heather Kelly and the SOS Fort Erie Group, Matthew O'Reilly and the Still Workers, Trish McAuliffe and the National Pensioners Federation, Janita Laban, Rolf Gerstenberger and the Hamilton Health Coalition, Michelle Robodeau, one of my personal heroes, Carolyn Egan, the Greater Toronto Health Coalition, the International Women's Day Committee, the Ontario Coalition for Abortion Clinics, the President of the Immigrant Women's Health Centre, Lily Chan, Heather Erling and the Canadian Labour Congress, Laura Walton and the Ontario Federation of Labour, Graham Webb and the Advocacy Centre for the Elderly, Nick Barry Shaw and the Council of Canadians, Joan Jordan, Ross Sutherland, and the Kingston Health Coalition. Bill Sinclair and the Neighborhood Group, Planned Parenthood, Care Watch, Street Health, and a whole bunch of community groups. I'm almost done. Anita Kariskal, Anita Johnson Ford, and the Simcoe Health Coalition. Trudy Ford, Helen Lee, and the Halton Health Coalition. Okay, so I can't hear you, sorry. Peter Bergmanis. Uh, and Jeff Hanks and the London Health Coalition. Ron Keating and the Port Dover Health Coalition. The Health Coalition staff, Salah Shadir, Alana Khan, Shulin Chien, Debbie Twain and Genev, Genevieve Fargo. Patrick and the Minden Group, Richard, Mayor Kevin Eccles of West Gray. And I'm just saying, and all of you, but the reason I'm saying all that is because I want it to be reported that this is a huge, broad group representing patients and families, nurses, doctors, frontline workers, community health care workers, religious and cultural organizations, all of us united, all of Ontario united, because the vast majority of people believe in and will fight to protect our public health care. From the bottom of my heart, it's the honor of my life to do this fight with you. It is the fight of our lives. It will change our society profoundly, the direction we go now. Thank you for being part of it, for putting your bodies on, on the line here, and for being here today. And that's more than enough for me. Thank you. blood and tears. I want to introduce our next speaker. Samia Hashi is the Ontario Director for Unifor, which represents almost 200,000 Ontario workers in every sector of our economy, including healthcare. Welcome, Samia.
Proud Secretary Treasurer of SEIU Healthcare Canada. I'm the proud son of the City of Toronto. And I'm a proud defender of universal health care. When I say hands off, you say our health care. Hands off. That's the message we got to continue to say to this government. Hands off our health care. Hands off our hospitals. And hands off our communities who depend on our services. It gives me great honor to introduce the next speaker, uh, the official opposition of the NDP, uh, Marit Staus, to the stage. Give an Ontario welcome to Marit Stiles, official opposition, MVP. Thank you. How are you doing out there? I'm Marit Stiles. I'm the leader of the official opposition, the NDP, here in the beautiful province of Ontario. I am so proud to be joined by so many members of our team up here. I want to try to introduce them all. A few of them had to go inside for committees, but I want to I make sure I mention them all. We have Jessica Bell, <laughs> Queen Gates, Peter Tavin, Lisa Bresky, Chris Glover, Jill Andrew, Monique Taylor, Tom Rakosevic, B. Borgwad, and I want to tell you, give send you a special greetings from our amazing health critic, France Jalina, yeah? I want to I wanna start by telling you that just a few hours ago, we were all inside the chamber in there. We were asking some tough questions to the government, 
And I said to the Premier, you know what, there's a few people going to show up today on the lawn at Queen's Park. And boy, did you, right? And that's what we got to keep doing. We got to keep showing up, friends. Listen. I know that everyone here believes that access to good care should be based on needs, not on how much money you have in your pocket. And that's what Ontarians believe too. But for the past six long years, this government has been taking money out of our public health care system to fund their privatization experiments. Shame on them. can pay for it. Yeah. Wait times are getting longer. Finding a family doctor or nurse practitioner is getting harder and boy do you know that staff burnout is real. Right? Good luck finding an emergency room that's open if you live in rural or northern Ontario. Right? a family doctor. We know that 2.4 million people cannot find a family doctor in the province of Ontario right now. And good luck getting this government to take the crisis seriously. I want to ask you if you heard what the health minister, Sylvia Jones, said when she was asked why are so many doctors and healthcare workers leaving our province? Do you know what she said? Do you know what she said? Let me, let me remind you. Her answer was, not a major concern. Not a major concern. Why are so many healthcare workers leaving our province? Not a major concern? Well, for this government, maybe this crisis isn't a major concern. But for, I tell you, 99% of the people of this province, you better believe it's a major concern. And if they won't do something about it, we sure will! Let's remind them that public health care is fundamental to who we are in Ontario, right? Hamilton in the house, let's give them a round of applause. Our next speaker, uh, Dr. Adil Shamji, emergency room physician representing the Liberal Party of Ontario today. 
with the healthcare portfolio. Let's give Dr. Adil a round of applause. How are you today? Let me tell you something, it's a beautiful day under any circumstances, but it's an even better day to fight for healthcare. Now I have the honor of representing Don Valley East, of representing the Ontario Liberal Party today for Bonnie Crombie. She's in Ottawa, but I'm joined by Catherine McGarry, the president of our party, and we're here with one very clear message, that our healthcare system is not for sale. Now look how many of you there are out in this crowd. I know that for every single one of you, there are thousands more across this province that say we want a strong, public, universal healthcare system. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I'm a nice guy. Because I'm a nice guy, for far too long, I gave Doug Ford and Sylvia Jones the benefit of the doubt. My mistake. I thought it was incompetence. I thought it was laziness. But now I know that it is deliberate and it is premeditated. Ever since I was elected, I have introduced legislation to cut down on, to stop private health care. I first started by telling them how they could shut down temporary for-profit nursing agencies. And you know what they said? They said no. Now yesterday, yesterday I introduced a new bill that was extra tough on private health care. It said, if you defraud health care, your fines will double. It said, if you charge patients to their credit card instead of their OHIP card, your fines will double. Today, Sylvia Jones was asked whether she would support my bill. And you know what she said? She said, she made it clearer than day. She said, I'm not interested in penalizing anyone. Disgusting. Yeah. If you defraud health care, you should be penalized. Yeah. If you're denying care to patients in Ontario, you should be penalized. Yeah. If you are profiteering of our health care system against the law, you should be penalized. Yeah. And because they refuse to take action, we are seeing the dominoes fall across our healthcare system. Whether they're hospitals in Durham, Muskoka, Strathroy, emergency departments in Perth, and other rural and northern communities across our entire province, whether it's nurses leaving their professions, family doctors retiring early, patients throwing up their hands because they have nowhere left to go. This government refuses to act and so today I'm here together with you to say enough is enough we will not tolerate this anymore and we will come together to fight for a better brighter stronger more accessible healthcare system in Ontario not for me not for you but for all of us And I'm going to take it back to my homie over here. Thank you very much. Take it away, brother. All right, all right. Let's give Dr. Adil a round of applause. Let's make some noise for Ontario. All right, let me try this side over here. Let's make some noise for Ontario over here. Let's make some noise for Ontario right here. Let's make some noise for Ontario over here. the leader of the Green Party of Ontario, Mike Schreiner, to the stage. Mike, come on up here. This is what people power looks like. Yeah, it's going to take people power and 
worker power to protect our health care system from John Ford. Let's give it up for Natalie and the entire Ontario Health Coalition team for this amazing day. Let's give it up for all the unions, all the community groups, everyone who is here today. I have one message for Doug Ford. Keep your greedy hands off our health care system. Health care should be for people, not profits. We, we built this system. We paid for this system. We can't allow Doug Ford to sell it off to private equity firms and wealthy, well-connected insiders. So are you with me that we are going to fight to the end to keep our health care system publicly funded and publicly delivered? Are you with me that we're going to stop people having to pay for health care with their credit card? Are you with me that we're going to pay nurses, doctors, PSWs and frontline healthcare workers, real wages with real benefits and better working conditions. Are you with me that we're gonna fight until there are no more emergency department closures? Are you gonna be with me to fight until all 2.3 million Ontarians who need a family doctor have a family doctor? Are you going to fight with me to keep safe consumption sites open? And are you going to fight with me to keep profits out of our health care system? So let me tell you something. Doug Ford said he was going to open the Greenbelt for development and the people of Ontario said no way. Doug Ford said he was going to take the charter rights of the lowest paid education workers away, and the people of Ontario said no way. So what we're saying right now to Doug Ford is, you will not privatize our health care system. And so we are going to work across party lines. We are going to work across communities and ideological lines. We are going to come together and fight to stop the privatization of health care. And it's going to be people and worker power that's going to do it. And we're going to work with the other opposition parties to amplify your voice at Queen's Park to let Doug Ford know to keep his hands off health care. Thank you for being here. We're not going to stop fighting. Keep fighting. Thank you, everyone. their ER closures, all of the stuff that is happening across this province. I want to introduce our first speaker of the hospitals under threat, Brenda Scott, who is the chair of the Chesley Hospital Community Support and the Ontario Health Coalition Small, Rural and Local Hospitals Committee. Brenda. For over a century, Small rural hospitals have been saving people's lives and they're doing it still. They're doing it today. They can treat people on site or they can prepare people to be safely transported to a regional hospital if that's what they need. And the Doug Ford government is shutting us down and we are really annoyed about that. He wants to call an election and he thinks that all of us in the rural area are going to like sheep, go to the polls and vote for him. No way, Doug. Anyways, I'm from Chesley. You may have heard of Chesley. We are coming up to uh, almost four years now with part-time ER. This hospital is 80 years old. It was built and paid for by the residents of Chesley, and it has provided excellent service all these years. But for the last four years, we have part-time ER. 
So it's open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. And you're out of the box if you have a problem in the evening or on the weekend. That's just not good enough. And we demand 24-7. communities in Ontario, so many of them are under attack. And you're going to hear from some of them here this afternoon. And it's just not good enough. Just not nearly good enough. These rural uh, citizens deserve the same access to health care as everybody else here. When you need it, where you need it, and how you need it. And there's no excuse that... that would justify not receiving that health care. I think my time is up, so I'm going to pass the mic back. Thank you so much for coming. It's lovely to see everybody. Thank you, Brenda, and thank you for your discipline. <laughs> Our next speaker is Kevin Eccles, who is the mayor of West Gray. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you very, very much, and thank you for all that have come out today to show the guy back there and the lady back there, we're not going to let this go. Well, maybe I misspoke when I said lady, but that's fine. I'm the mayor of West Gray, our hospital in Durham halfway between Guelph and Own Sound. As of today, the last patient was moved out of our inpatient beds. And on June 3rd, Monday, our inpatient beds are gonna be transferred to two other sites. I think we heard up here a little while ago that it's about staffing issues. It's about uh, not having enough staff to cover areas and that it, you know, we're just not sure how we can get any more. I heard Dr. Shamji say, it's not that. This is premeditated. I've looked at it. They've moved. They've done everything they can to create it because they've driven most of our nurses to private temp agencies, correct? Just the start of privatization. Why the book? In West Gray, on Tuesday, I declared a state of emergency for our municipality. Because this is an emergency on rural health care, on northern health care and closer to urban health care. The people behind me that are in power are driving us to privatization. This is a lawsuit, judicial review, that we have launched in West Gray to get it into the court and reveal the dirtiness that's happening. Thank you to all the labor unions that are here today to jumping in behind and supporting us. This is not going to be a silver bullet wins this game. It's going to be a long fight. Perseverance is my last word that I'm really going to do. Perseverance. We're not going to give up. We have perseverance to win this. We'll win it hospital by hospital. And come shortly, we'll win it riding by riding when he calls an election. The fight is on. Stay with us. Doug Ford, keep your hands off of my hospital. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to introduce our next speaker, Tony Vanderstelt, who is with the Save South Muskoka Hospital. Hello, everybody. I I can't help but think, I'm here representing our team. We've got a number here to my left from the committee. Um, we're all in this for a fight. I see so many smaller places represented here, and each one of us has a similar story. 
in, in particular in Muskoka, we're up against a board who claims to be transparent and wants cooperation and, and, and exhibits none of that. Everything is directed. Our doctors are not allowed to speak out against a plan. 40, over 40 of South Muskoka doctors signed a document saying the plan they are proposing is not good. It's bad for health care. It's bad for patient outcomes. They are not allowed to speak about it. So we are fighting, as are all of you, we are fighting to save our hospital. And we, we are galvanized in that effort, as many of you are here. We've incorporated, we're trying to give as best voice as we can. Uh, so I just thank you for this opportunity, as we all are giving a voice to the people behind us, to, uh, to launch inquiries, to, to take the public, uh, take them to court. We have to get a lot of this stuff out in the open. And uh, in Muskoka, we continue to fight hard for equitable health care with better patient outcomes. And uh, today is a big part of that. So thank you, and let's continue the fight. Thank you so much, Tony, and thank you, thanks for all you are doing in your struggle. I want to next introduce Heather Kelly, who is a fiery fighter for public Medicare. She's with SOS Fort Erie. I'm so proud to be up here with you. Wow. We've been in this struggle in Fort Erie since 2009. 2009, they came along and decided they were going to close our hospital, and we fought back. We fought back, and in 2012, the most they did was close our ER and left us with an urgent care. They're at it again, folks. They want to shut us down in four years. It ain't gonna happen, not as long as I can breathe. Let me tell you, the people in Fort Erie are standing beside each and every single one of you. We're fighting back as hard as we can. We need your help. We know you're with us. Stand tall, stand proud, stand for public health care. Thank you so much. Heather, and if you want to, I mean, these people are tireless. They're fighting every single day. It is literally hand-to-hand -hand combat there. I want to next introduce Welland uh, from uh, the... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I got a little... Uh, I'm just going to introduce Suhad. Hey, everybody, how are you? Just look at you! Here. I'm from the Niagara Health Coalition and with Fort Erie SOS we've been working really hard to try to keep our services open in the urgent care, Fort Erie and Port Colborne 24-7 and our Welland Hospital that they have closed emergency surgeries. There's none on the weekend and from 4 to 8 in the, during the week there's no surgery. So where do they go? They go to our overflowing emergency departments in St. Catharines and Niagara Falls. And we need to stop that. We have heard numerous people talk about we have to fight. Well, guess what? I've got the t-shirt here. We have to rise up. And we are rising up. Just look at you. You're all here. And we are going to spread the word privatization is out. It's a no, no. And to be able to do that, we need every single person that is here, that is in Thunder Bay, St. Marie, Ottawa, that are having these big rallies to rise up and commit to do at least one thing. So one thing you can do is you can help spread the word with the leaflets. How many can do that? Contact your union, contact your local condition, go to the OHA, OHC website and say, I want a leaflet. We've got lots of leaflets. We've got three, four months to do it. We, can't, we need to count on you. The next thing is we need to be visible. lawn signs. We have lawn signs. 
So if you want a lawn sign, contact your local coalition. Contact info at ohc.ca and make sure that you order your sign. So that, like mushrooms, we sprout all over Ontario. And it sends a clear message to Doug Ford that we will not stand for privatization of our private health care. And by the way, you can always take out your cell phone, do a knee transfer to OHC, because we do need some money. There we go. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sue. And now I'm going to call on Comments Red to come and lead us in a song. And by the way, Comments Red launched us beautifully at the beginning of this march. 68,000 registered nurses and health professionals, as well as 18,000 nursing student affiliates. Give it up for Erin! You tell him, Erin. My name is Erin Harris. I'm a proud registered nurse and the president of the Ontario Nurses Association.
And if that isn't enough for the Premier, now more public funds than ever are be being given to more national corporations and to fund agency nurses and private clinics across Ontario. That is a shame. So I guess you can tell I am enraged. How dare this government steal from the people of this province? How dare they take away a high quality system that we have built and invested in? And how dare they mislead people into believing private sector will fix the crisis this government created in the first place? Shame on Doug Ford. But shame on us if we let him win. So I have one last thing to say. How dare he disregard all of us? Can he see out the windows today? See our power? Show him! We are not going to let Doug Ford and his government rob us. Let's stop him now! 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 Thank you! They think that if they call an election that we'll give them another term because he's afraid of what's happening up in the federal government. He's afraid to have Pierre. And I'm going to tell you right now, I need a commitment from each and every single one of you. I need you to make a promise right now that when the PCs come knocking at your door 
you slam the door and say, not this house. And I need you to take it one step forward. Over the next few months, the OFL with our affiliates, there's 54 unions and a million workers. We're going to be out in your community and we're going to be organizing. And we're going to lift up our voices. And we're saying, Doug Ford, you're fired. We're done. You're out. Here's your pink slip. Go home. Who's with me? Let's fire Ford. Let's fire Ford. Let's fire Ford. Let's fire Ford. Let's oh, let me squeeze in here. Thank you. All right. Hello, Ontario. Next speaker is Rabbi Shalom Shachter. I'm a patient, but I'm also a voter. I'm also the Toronto Rep Board of Rabbis representative to the Toronto Area Interfaith Council. We, along with all of you, fought hard for everyone to have access to medically necessary care to be paid for by our OHIP card. The government is infringing on that right by privatizing the delivery, for example, of cataract surgery and hip and knee replacements. For-profit clinics are seducing patients, claiming to offer speedier or better outcomes. Patients report that for-profit clinics tell them they have to pay for these procedures or wait for two years to have it done in a hospital. There is no two-year wait for cataract surgery. 80% of patients receive this care in hospitals within three months. There is also no evidence that outcomes from private clinics are superior. I needed cataract surgery and was told by my private clinic that their office had a machine that could deliver a more accurate assessment of my condition than the one that OHIP pays for. And that I could be given lenses that would give me better visions than the one covered by OHIP. When I asked for documentation of the better outcomes, I was not provided with anything. But given the importance to me of my eyesight, I paid around $1,000 for these extras. This is called upselling, which will increase with the new legislation enacted by the current provincial government. Still, I had to wait over a year for my cataract surgery. We routinely hear from patients who are charged $3,000 plus for cataract surgery, $7,000 for both eyes, for medical services that are fully covered by OHIP. I understand that compensation paid to private clinics for the physical plant and the procedures themselves is more than what the province pays when, than the, when the work is done in hospitals. And still that is not enough, so the private clinics extra bill the patients even more for the procedure as well as upsell them. The, the faith community is distressed that privatization is causing suffering to vulnerable population because of the threat to our Medicare laws which were brought in 60 or 70 years ago. A holy person advised me that the only way to get it together is together. Will we get it together? Will we get it together together? Thank you, thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Vivian Stamatopoulos, a professor and advocate for long-term care families and residents. Let's welcome Dr. Vivian here. Thank you. Hi. Oh, okay, when Natalie asked if I would come talk, uh, obviously about privatization, it was a hard yes. Uh, who remembers what happened in long-term care? Yeah, we want to cheer, but it's nothing to cheer about, right? And this is the prime example of what happens when you privatize a system. For people who aren't aware of this, Ontario has the highest proportion of for-profit long-term care across Canada. Boo! And that's why we saw over 5,000 people die in those facilities in those first three years. Shame, shame. And we know that the vast majority of those deaths were in the for-profit facilities. There's no question about it. And we know why. They hire less workers, they pay their workers less, they provide less direct care per resident per day, and they have much more in the way of verified 
deaths, injury, uh, hospitalization, neglect, abuse, we know this. The evidence is clear, it's all there. So the question is, how is this impacting acute care? Well, if you don't think that what they are doing in long-term care travels over to hospitals, you haven't been paying attention. Just a couple months ago, we had a fake nurse arrested in long-term care. Do you know how she was sent to those three different long-term care homes? From a private, for-profit temp agency. Shay! And these are the agencies that are trying to break the union public sector, period. This is how they get in and do their dirty work. Number one, we've had a rise in homicides in long-term care, linked directly to short staffing and incomplete supervision in these places, entirely preventable. This government, who remembers the military reports? Yeah, this government just rewarded Orchard Villa, one of the worst for-profit bad actors, with the worst military report about what happened in those homes, okay? With a mega expansion into the next generation. Yeah, because we reward negligence here. This is what Doug Ford does, he rewards bad actors. And just to really hit home how much trouble we're in, because what happens in long-term care, it's a litmus test. It's gonna happen in acute care next. Last week, a week ago today, this government slipped through a regulation in long-term care. Get ready for this where they are literally de-skilling, not even de-skilling, they're removing all skills from a new bottom tier class of workers in long-term care. They're cre because apparently PSWs make too much in their eyes. Shame! So they have now slipped through, very, very secretly, not thinking anyone would notice, regulation allowing anyone to be hired to work with the most medically complex, frail senior population. Yeah, that's happening. And they're gonna make it permanent in 2025. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you wanna hear the best part? I'll end with this, the best part. They are going to give the licensees, mainly the for-profit capitalists who are on their yachts in Florida or wherever the hell they are, the decision, use their good discretion to hire whoever they want, as they see fit. You don't need skills, you don't need training, you don't need nothing, just come on in. As long as you accept $12 an hour, that's what's happening. So prepare yourselves for that. And the last thing that they slipped in in the fine print, because you always gotta look at the fine print, was they will give the residents, the majority of which have a dementia diagnosis, okay? The most frail, medically complex population. They're gonna give them, apparently, the choice to decide if they want a worker with zero skills or qualifications or a nurse. Or a PSW. Do you really think they're gonna tell them the difference between the different workers? No, they're not gonna tell them. So if you don't want this nightmare that we're dealing with in a predominantly for-profit but funded publicly funded long-term care system, you need to tell that crony capitalist premier to keep his hands off our health care! When I say hands off, you say our health care. Hands off? Our healthcare. Hands off? Our hands off! This country. And we're here today to tell Doug Ford that public health care is worth fighting for. Isn't that right? Cancer patients are worth fighting for. Seniors in long-term care are worth fighting for. The injured in emergency rooms are worth fighting for. Healthcare workers are worth fighting for. A country as prosperous as Canada can afford to invest in healthcare workers. Because when healthcare workers do well, families and patients do well. A corrupt premier cannot be trusted with our health. Today is about restoring trust in our public health care. We need OHIP cards, not credit cards. We need OHIP cards, not credit cards. I said we need OHIP cards, not credit cards. So once again, I represent, I'm proud to represent the great union our proud union, this union, our union, SEIU Healthcare.
60,000 members. Shout out to our members over there. Let's keep fighting. Let's keep uniting. And let's keep sending the messages that we need to send right across this province. Thank you very much. Thank you to our members that came up today with me. So lastly, I'm going to introduce a good friend of SEIU's. We've done a lot of great work together. He's been an advocate for a very long time, a champion for publicly delivered health care in this country, in this province, and across communities in Ontario. I want you to give a warm reception to the president on the Ontario Council of Hospital Unions, part of CUPE, Michael Hurley. Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you for your leadership in your communities, in your organizations, in your unions. This government has turned its back on the thousands of people who are on waiting lists for surgeries waiting beyond medically recommended time limits, 2,500 of whom died last year. This government can deliver beer in grocery stores, but it cannot deliver beds to the 1,400 people who are waiting for them on stretchers in hallways in Ontario hospitals. This government is closing hospitals and hospital services in small communities across Ontario, like Durham, like Minden, stripping out vital beds and services as they try to load up the remaining hospitals with such a surge that they cannot possibly deliver and must fail. And then they will give us privately operated facilities in their place, even though those facilities will be 200% more expensive, it doesn't matter. Even those facilities will kill 2% uh, more people in terms of hospital care, 8% in terms of private clinics. They don't care. This is about opening a market. This government stands on the bones of the residents who died in Ontario in for-profit long-term care. Three quarters of 4,000 people died in squalor, died in neglect, died of dehydration, died in understaffed facilities while their owners reveled in profits and shareholder uh, dividends. This movement stopped the privatization of cancer care under the last Conservative government. This movement stopped the privatization of ambulances under the last government and the privatization of the blood services. And this movement will stop the privatization of hospital services and the closure of hospital services under this government. And we'll do it like we always do it. Number one, we will never, ever give up. We will never, ever stop fighting. We will go door to door. We will have referendums. We will distribute millions of leaflets. We will rally like this and in smaller rallies in our communities. And we will batter this government until we achieve a healthcare system which allows access for everyone regardless of their ability to pay. Thank you so much for coming today. All right, so now I'm gonna give you some boring information. There are lawn signs to the right of me 
you will see over the fence all the buses that ordered lawn signs. I want to make sure the bus captains go and pick them up and take them and put them on the bus. There is a wagon there to help you get them over to the bus, but if you would please do that before the bus leaves, that would be greatly appreciated. And now for a little bit of music. Thank you all for coming. What a great, great day.